Okay, folks, for this screencast, we're going to talk about eigenvectors again and eigenvalues. Um, but we're going to do it without the EIG function. Um, somebody emailed me and said, hey, uh, let's say, let's do clear, CLC, close all. Uh, let's say you have a matrix, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and you want to find the eigenvectors, the eigenvalues, and you use EIG. Uh, let's put this over here and this over here. Everything's all well and good. You've got your eigenvalues. Oh, there's a zero. Uh, can we just change this? There we go. Okay. Uh, so you have your eigenvalues and your eigenvectors. And the idea was is, well, uh, what if you can't use EIG? Well, so there's a, a couple things that you uh, need to do to get this to work. So first is y you need to find the eigenvalues. Uh, so to do this, you need to get the characteristic equation, and you can use that using car poly. And so if you use a undefined function or variable, blast! Okay, uh, obviously I need to switch to the newer version of MATLAB. Okay, folks, can you believe it? I have a 2018 MATLAB on my computer now. Uh, I guess car poly was invented after 2009. Anyway, so car poly, what it will do is it will give you the uh, roots uh, or the coefficients of the characteristic equation. So if you want to find the uh, eigenvalues, eigenvalues, you just do roots of the characteristic equation. You run that, and you'll see that you know you've got 14. Uh, 1.57, and obviously, like because you're doing this in a different way, it's going to sort it differently. But um, that's pretty much what it's going to be. So if you want to do like put it into a matrix S without EIG, you just do diag of eigenvalues, and then I'm going to throw some semicolons and hit go. And so there we go. There's everything. There's S without EIG and S with EIG. So um, now we have the eigenvalues. So now what we need to do is we need to uh, find the eigenvectors and so this this is where things get a little bit difficult but basically what you're doing is is that a times v is equal to s times v um, that's the equation for uh, eigenvalues so or eigenvectors and eigenvalues so if you solve this what you end up getting is you get a minus s times i the identity matrix times v equals zero so the problem with this is that the determinant of a minus s times i is equal to zero which means that the inverse of uh, a minus s times i is uh, undefined. Um, so you can't just invert this matrix to uh, solve for v. So what do we do? Um, well, what you can do is let, let's just compute um, the, the eigenvector for, let's just compute this matrix for the first one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call a tilde uh, equal to a minus s times uh, i, I, it's uh, 3 by 3. And then in this case, I'm going to call this si. And SI is going to be equal to S um, is going to be equal to eigenvalues of one. So it'll just be the first one. Okay. So here's my matrix here, and it, it looks completely different than the original matrix A. But what I can do is I can type in the determinant of A tilde just to show that the determinant is indeed zero. And um, what what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to do A tilde reduced, and I'm going to use the RREF function, and I'm going to run that. And what you'll see here is that the diagonal becomes the pivot points, one and one, and the last row will always be a row of zeros. And that's just because, again, you know, because of the way you define this eigenvalue eigenvector matrix, you're going to have a row that's completely undefined, which is why you can't invert this matrix. Now, the interesting thing is, is that because these are always pivot points, what you can do is if I want to make an eigenvector, it's, it's always going to be a three by one. But I know that the last one can be whatever I want. So in this case, I'm just going to make it one because I because I, it's a free variable that I can do whatever I want with it. Well, if you look at the first row of a tilde reduced, you see that it's one zero minus zero point three three eight, and then that's going to be t multiplied by your eigenvector, which is going to be something something and then one. It's always gonna be one. Well, if you multiply this out, you're gonna get x minus 0 0.338, and this has to equal zero, which means that x equals 0 0.338, right? If you do this for the second row, I'm gonna copy this, you get 
zero, one, and then minus 0 0.77, what is that, a six? Six, three? And then you're gonna get, instead of x minus that, you're gonna get y minus 0 0.7763, which means that y equals 0 0.7763. So that means my eigenvector is 0 0.338, semicolon, 0 0.7763, and then a one, right? So if you look at that, that means that the eigenvector is really just the negative of a tilde reduced. It's gonna be row one, two, n minus one, so in this case, two, and it's gonna be the, uh, yeah, let me, just so I can change this, let me, uh, let me put like n equals three up here, and then everywhere I see a three, let me do n, so this is n, V, I can, instead of end, I can do N. But I guess I don't, I, I can do that down here. So I'm gonna say VI is negative A tilde N, N minus one. So it's gonna go from the first row to the second to last row, and then the last row, and then a one. And I'm gonna hit a five on that. And let's see, it didn't like, oh, okay, sorry, There's. A, I just need to put it, I don't even, I don't actually need this anymore. Okay, all right, so there's my eigenvector, right? And if you look at the this eigenvector, so let me comment, let me get rid of this and this, so I don't see it. Okay, so the first eigenvalue is 14, and here's my eigenvector that I computed, and that's completely different than this number up here. Um, and so the reason why it's different is because MATLAB likes to normalize eigenvectors, and so in order to get your correct VI, you just need to divide by the norm. And if I semicolon this guy and do that guy, you'll see they're exactly the same, negative uh, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.59, and 0 0.76. The only difference is, is that one is negative. And if you know your linear algebra, you know that that doesn't really matter. You can have negative eigenvalues or eigenvectors. Well, eigenvalues are always the same in, in terms of magnitude. Um, but the, uh, the direction of an eigenvector can be either positive or negative. So if you want this to work, all you need to do is uh, throw a, a loop on this bad boy for idx equals one to n, right? There's n eigenvectors. Tab everything in here. Do, 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 end. And then I'm gonna throw a semicolon down there. I'm gonna change this to an uh, idx so that it loops through. And then I'm gonna make a v without eig is zeros, n comma n, and down here, I'm just gonna say V without EIG of all rows, and then the IDX column is VI. And then I'm gonna just spit it out to the home menu. Bada bing, bada boom, let's see what we got. So the eigenvalue 14, these are the same. This eigenvector, the first column and this column are the same, just one's negative. The eigenvalues are swapped here, so this one's 1.57 and that one's 1.57, so you have to compare this eigenvalue vector to this one, and they're the same, and then that means that this one should be the same as that one, which they are. And so there you have it. If you want to find the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of a matrix without using the EIG function, this is how you do it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have fun.